Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Troy here. Appreciate y'all joining me once again in my kitchen. Today I'm going to do some homemade tuna noodle casserole. I've got some uh, four tablespoons of butter melting on the stove. We're fixing to add some flour. We're going to make us a little uh, bechamel, bechamel sauce. All right, my four tablespoons of real unsalted butter are melted down. Now it's time to add us four tablespoons of just all-purpose flour. incorporated there and we're just gonna let this flour cook out for maybe four minutes maybe five minutes I've got it over a medium flame and again this is gonna be just a basic roux basically so you want to keep stirring it you don't want it to burn and we don't want it to get dark. This is going to be a white sauce to go in our tuna casserole. So we're just trying to get it all incorporated here and cook the flour taste out of it. All right, it's starting to smell a little bit nutty. And I think that's probably going to be about good. So let's see, we've got a nice nice white sauce there the beginnings of a wonderful dish and I'm gonna start off using a little bit of half and half a little bit in there at a time Probably been like a half cup of half and half. I'm gonna switch over to regular milk now. Just got some regular whole milk. And as you see, I started off adding a little bit of liquid, either the milk or half and half or heavy cream, whatever you wanna use. Adding a little bit at a time until the flour incorporates with it. Cause you don't wanna get it all lumpy. And then, as it cooks and starts to expand, that flour absorbs all of that milk, you can gradually add more and more liquid. All right, just to give you a heads up, uh, this is starting to come up to a little boil. I noticed it was getting fairly thick. So I went ahead and used this whole quart of uh, milk, whole milk. So I'm gonna let it warm back up. It's still steaming, but I'm gonna let it warm back up. And then once it comes up to a slight boil, I'm gonna turn her down to simmer. Be right, be right back. All right, this is coming up to a little slight boil now. So what I'm gonna do is take it off of this medium high heat. Turn that off. I'm gonna put it on this back burner back here that uh, I'm gonna let it finish off on simmer. But I told you about that onion PK, this is what it is. It's uh, just a part of an onion I had left over, a little bit of bay leaf, a couple of cloves holding the bay leaf on there. Just gonna plop that down in there. Also gonna throw a little bit of ground nutmeg in there. I don't have any fresh nutmeg. So just give it a few taps there. <clears throat> and we're gonna let this simmer in the back, probably uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. I haven't put any salt or pepper in here yet, so we'll do that uh, on our final tasting at the end. But let me simmer this down. In the meantime, we're gonna saute down some, some uh, onions and bell peppers and all that good stuff. Be right back. All right, everybody, I've got this bechamel sauce in the back. Just remember to stir it every once in a while so it doesn't form that uh, skin on the top as it's uh, simmering down a little bit. And it was a little liquidy 
as y'all saw and that is because I am going to simmer it back here for 15-20 minutes or so so it's going to uh, you know some of that's going to evaporate out it's going to condense a little bit in the meantime down here I've got some butter that's two tablespoons of unsalted butter I'll throw in some onions it's like uh, probably half of a regular onion and I've got uh, two stalks of celery and two two sprigs of green onion got those chopped up pretty fine didn't have any bell pepper so we're gonna skip the bell pepper I saw this stuff down just a little bit sweat it down so let me do that we'll be right back all right I added another couple of tablespoons of butter here I'm gonna throw some mushrooms in here shortly and let that butter help help those mushrooms get going all right my onions and stuff are sweated down pretty good I still like them to have a little bit of bite so I've got uh, some pieces I've sliced up some fresh I think these are kamini uh, like baby uh, heck I forget what you call them portobello I'll saute those down in this butter and onion celery mix here so let me do that and uh, we'll be right back well, what I'm doing now is just kind of cooking this out it's probably been four or five minutes since I put the onions and stuff in and the mushroom has just been in there for a few minutes a couple of minutes or so but anyway I'm just kind of cooking this down a little bit until most of the butter and uh, liquid from the onions is evaporated and then at that point these mushrooms will start kind of browning a little bit and then at that point we can uh, give her a little bit of salt and pepper so give it another minute or two be right back all right these mushrooms and stuff are looking really good so i'm gonna put a little salt and pepper on them just cracked black pepper and a little fresh crushed salt here cracked salt everybody has different tastes so whatever your tastes would allow do it your way all right so these are about done I'm fixing to pull them off the flame and set them on the side for right now so be right back all right everybody I've got my bechamel sauce off of the flame now just letting it cool down and this is what you're looking for do like that coat the back of a spoon and it doesn't you know it doesn't move it's good stuff all right so now what I need to do is get this onion and bay leaf and clove out of here then we add a little salt and pepper and a lot of people like to use white pepper I like the taste of black pepper so that's what I am using so we're gonna mix the salt and pepper in here and again it's got nutmeg in here it's got the onion and the bay leaf and the clove flavors in here but that is just a really really nice nice sauce right there I mean, when I do like this and stir it up, watch how quickly it stops spinning because it's thick. See that? Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. All right. Let me give that a little taste real quick here. Oh, man, that's good. Needs a little bit of salt. smell is great a little bit more pepper another little stir and you can see my onions and mushrooms and stuff cooling on the right hand side there all right let's taste this again
that's good right there. All right, so I'm just gonna let that finish cooling off. And now we can assemble some stuff, uh, the tuna and everything. Be right back. All right, everybody, y'all ready to throw this together? Let's do it. Here's what we got. First off, we need to grease us one of these pans of Pyrex or whatever you want to use. Doesn't really matter. I've got some canola oil. You can either rub, rub you some butter in there or just do that right there and that'll work. Okay. Now that's gone. I've got uh, some albacore tuna in water. I drained the water out. I'm just going to put it in here and break it up. Just break it up by hand. It's just like shredding pork, baby. Once you get this all broken up, then we can start adding the other stuff. Noodles, veggies. All right. Noodles. Let's see what we got here. Got noodles. Oodles of noodles. got our mushrooms and our onions, celery, green onion, toss some of that in there. And I'm just throwing the juice and everything in there. Got a can of sliced ripe olives. I'm going to use that. What else am I putting in there? Let's see. Got some fresh frozen green peas. Okay, rip it up a little bit. There we go. Need something to stir this with. Let me see here. Oh, here we go. Kind of mix it all together here. Probably can't see that. Let me see if I can get you a little closer. Hang on. So y'all can see down in there. There you go. Yeah. About as good as it's going to get, I guess. Okay. Now, what else I've got here? I've got a little uh, sour cream. Excuse me. A little bit of sour cream I used the other day when I did my seven, seven bean dip plus a little bit. Throw a little sour cream in there. I've got about half, half of this container, 16 ounce container. So we'll set a cup. We'll throw that in there. A lot of people use uh, cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, cream of celery soups, and that, that's fine. That's the way uh, we grew up. My mom did it that way. But I just wanted to do a little something from scratch. So this is my version. All right, now we time. Need some cheese. Let's get us a little cheese going. Found my cheese, and I'm not gonna use a whole lot because I mainly want want that bechamel sauce. To uh, and this this is sharp. Mainly want the bechamel sauce in the middle there and cheese on the top. Sure is looking pretty though. Okay. Now let's put our bechamel sauce in there. All right, there's my nice bechamel sauce. Bechamel, it's got a CH in the middle. See if that's gonna be enough. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put it all in there. There we go. Oh yeah, babe. 
Now we're talking. Yeah, you don't want it too thin. You want it, I mean, you do want it thin, I'm sorry. You don't want it too thick because as this bakes in the oven, it is going to evaporate some of this liquid and the bechamel sauce is going to get a little thicker. So you want it a little bit on the thin side. Okay, let's give that a quick taste. See if it needs anything here. Mm. A little pep pepper and a little salt. And you do want to be careful on the salt, as I've told y'all before, because the cheese has salt in it. So you don't want to over salt it. But a little dash. There we go. And this is turning out to be pretty good, y'all. in the dish over here. There we go. Let's see if I can do this carefully. Okay, that's probably good enough. Squish down in there a little bit. Yeah, I didn't have too much left over. Just uh, there you go. See, that's all I had left over. Now we throw this little cheese on the top. If I can get it open. I put a little bit of sharp. And a little bit of regular mild. I don't like the flavor of sharp, so I'm gonna use quite a bit of that. There you go. So that was that was the sharp. Now a little bit of regular mild. Just regular shredded mild. And y'all know I like my cheese. And instead of cheese on top, you could put some panko breadcrumbs or some other breadcrumbs or even uh, I've seen people do whole crushed up potato chips. Oh, I know it would be good on here. Some crushed up pork skin. But that'd be jamming. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is stick another pan, a sheet pan, under this in the oven just in case, just in case it bubbles over a little bit, it won't mess up my oven. And I've got the oven going, uh, got the oven going about 350, 375-ish, somewhere in there. Uh, I'm gonna check it here in about, about a half hour. Be right back. Let's slide this baby in the middle rack here. There we go, middle of the oven. And again, I got the sheet pan with some foil, just in case I have any spillage. And I'm going 350. I'll check it here in about 20 minutes, see how it's doing. But it may need to go more, probably half hour or so. All right, it took about a half an hour, right at 30 minutes, in fact, to bake this in the oven at 350. Uh, the cheese is nice and melted, started brown a little bit on the top of the last five minutes. So uh, I knew it was done, and everything was cooked in there anyway. And also browned off some, some little brown and serve rolls, put some butter in there. So let's cut into this. Let's see what it's like. See if it's any good. I'm sure it's going to be. Let's give it a shot here. Sure smells good. See if I can do this here. Yeah. Well, it's nice and creamy. Sure is. 
goodness gracious. I like that. Right. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. All right. There you go. See, it's still smoking. Let's see what it tastes like. There we go. Boy, it's going to be hot. Could use a little salt, a little bit of pepper. But that bechamel sauce is good stuff. Hot. Mm-hmm. That's a keeper, y'all. Might all throw in a little, a little more tuna next time too. Um, I thought I was just gonna make a small batch. It's only one used one can of tuna, two cans of tuna, but that's some good stuff. I should give this this a, a try with this bechamel sauce. Appreciate y'all checking in. Take care.